In continuation of this four part series, we're going to go over this fella, the ISO, also known as ISO. I'm gonna teach you what it is and how to use it. If you haven't seen the previous ones yet, I'll go ahead and link them right up here and down in the description below. Now, are you curious about ISO? Cause me so curious. Hi, my name is Sean Misa and welcome to my channel where I teach you the basics of photography and videography. So if this is what you're interested in, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe with the notification bell turned on so you can be updated when I upload new videos. For the third video in this series, we're going to go over this guy, the ISO. For this, I would equate this to light compensation. So if you're going to be in a darker room, we'll need to go ahead and boost up the ISO. So that way it can bring in a little bit more light and you can better see your subjects. Some cameras like the one I'm using, the Sony a7 III, can actually produce a very usable photo at higher ISOs. So you will wanna do some research and play around with your camera to find out what's the best usable high ISO. Generally, I tend not to go higher than about 16 to 3200. In this room, it's kind of bright in here, so I don't need a high ISO. What I'll do is set my ISO at 200. That way, the photo will have less noise and produce a sharper image. Now, let's try a room that doesn't have as much light. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing in here? I'm trying to take a nap. <laughs> Why here though? There, I mean, there's a couch, which is a lot more comfortable than that. Because it's dark in here, duh. Okay, okay, my bad. I just want to take a few pictures in here and then I'll be uh, right out. Okay. Thanks. Mm. It's a lot darker in here. So if I want to try and capture a photo in here, I'll set my ISO on the higher side. Let's try it at 16,000, just to go on the extreme side. If you look at the photo now, it looks a lot greenier and you can see all that fuzziness that I was talking about. This is the digital noise that I was referring to. <laughs> Speaking of noise, you are still too loud. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, my bad. I'm sorry, I'm almost done, then I'll be right out of here. Uh. So that's the drawback of using a higher ISO. You do introduce a little bit more noise, but in a low light situation like this, it can help out in a pinch. Now, let's get out of here before I piss him off some more. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. Uh. Now, we've gone over all three settings of your camera. In the next video, I'm going... In the next video, I'm going to teach you about the exposure meter, the tool to help you understand how to balance all three settings so you can get the best picture possible using the manual mode and you can finally get off of that auto mode <laughs> oh my gosh what are you doing what's with all the noise i'm cooking can't you see <laughs> but i'm filming here can i wait i'm almost done see you don't like it when somebody goes into your space and starts making all sorts of noise, do ya? I said I was sorry. I'm almost done, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so be sure to like this video, subscribe with the notification bell turned on so you can be notified when the next video comes out. If you have any questions, Drop them in the comment section below and I'd be glad to answer them. I hope I was able to help you understand the ISO and how to use it. The best way to really understand how it works is to go out and experiment. So get out your camera, play around with the ISOs and see how high you can go before you start to lose too much quality. Comment down below with what camera you're using and how high of an ISO you found to be usable. Be sure to use the hashtag MeSecures because I would love to see all of your photos. What are you waiting for? Get out there and be curious. What are you cooking? It smells good. <laughs> Can I have some?